Welcome back, everyone, to iCup StarCraft TV. I'll be your host and caster, iCup Fitz here. And I hope you guys are having a excellent day like I am. Happy Saturday. Happy Easter weekend to anyone who is a uh, Catholic out there. Uh, so today, we're going to be having an awesome game. It's going to be, again, we're going to be taking some uh, highlighted games from a clan league from... Um, I Cup Clan League season uh, season 22 week nine, uh, just because I don't think we got enough coverage on it, and uh, we had some pretty entertaining games last time, and I went through that, and again we've now went through and deciphered through some good replays that I have done between IFU versus Salvation Army or SA, whatever you want to call them, and anyway in the top right hand corner for Salvation Army it'll be Podges. And his opponent in the top left hand corner as the yellow turn making this a TVT. It will be IFU's Marin. Now, with that, IFU is International Federation of Untouchables. Um, now, if you guys have, you know, been casters of or followers of my casting for some time, you do know that I do sometimes, you know, reminisce about uh, BMW or you even know BMW. And uh, BMW was a really great guy, but uh, the point was he was actually a admin for them uh, a while back. I don't know how long ago, but unfortunately they got rid of a, an amazing team team manager in my opinion. But uh, regardless of what has happened, IFU versus um, Salvation Army, uh, and this is gonna be set to game one, um, and uh, yeah. So do see Marin gonna be throwing down that. Uh, 12 racks uh, and then going to be going into the 12 uh, actually 11 11 barracks and then going into 12 gas um oh this is interesting i think he got gas a bit first i think he got gas first before his racks so actually podges is actually gonna have a bit more gas income uh just straight out of the game um if that's gonna be super important i don't think it will be huge but um it's just a slight edge nonetheless, so uh, going into the game, um, definitely not a bad idea whatsoever. Now we do have uh, Marwin uh, trying to get rid of uh, Padge's uh, scouting SCV, but having a bit of difficulty in doing so, uh, as that SCV did get the lucky scout off. Now, finally, we're going to see Marwin going to be going for that. As you can see, he did see that he was going to go down here, but uh, because of he, because of how the SCV from Marwin got into, or Padge's rather, got into his base, uh, he was able to quickly redirect his SCV. Unfortunately, though, we did just see that the SCV did get picked off, and he only saw a barracks, so he doesn't know what's on what his, what is his way. He doesn't know if it's gonna be one racks FE, gasless FE. Be a little odd for a TVT, but uh, you know, nonetheless, it'd be nice to know. And he is playing in the dark right now, compared to what Marwin, or compared to Patches, uh, who really got a nice a, a, a lot of scouting off. You know, knowing the time of the factory, I uh, should be able to figure out what the hell is going on uh, with that. But um, moving on, we do have the first factory coming down for Marin right now. We'll see what he will decide to go from from here. Uh, does he go for the two factory opening, or does he just do a one factory uh, expand? Um, and that, it's, that's exactly what uh, Podges is doing. Um, again, you know, just not knowing what's headed his way. Uh, but we do see. Uh, we actually do see that uh, Marwin's actually might be uh, quite aggressive at this point. Um, moving ahead, three Marines right here. A little odd choice in uh, TBT just because Vultures can easily out-micro these. As long as you can patrol micro, it's really not that difficult. I can even do it. And first Vulture is out. And uh, Terran actually may be looking to stock up um, in getting that extra gas uh, that, as he might be throwing down an expanse rather as he is starting to stockpile those minerals quite high. And yes, he does. He just throws down expansion right now. And Terran's going to be uh, being aggressive right here. Did force the SCV. Uh, SCV did get canceled right here. He's going to have these first three Marines in here. But here we go. The Will the patrol micro be good? One Marine's down. It only takes two shots. Two shots from a Vulture to kill a single Marine right here. And look at that. Beautiful patrol micro killing off every single Marine right here. But that did heavily damage that Vulture right here. This Vulture should be able to come in here and clean that up with no trouble whatsoever. And should be able to get some SCV kills. It's going to be stopping that... SCV from building that factory and keep in mind that this uh, command center is still not building behind all of this. So what uh, of what Marwin did get the advantage back um, that would have been good to Podgers because he got up his command center faster but those 
times they're gonna be able to do a decent amount of damage right here but these vultures will eventually get cleaned up after getting maybe one or two SCV lives right here so well done well played but uh, and then there we go Podge is gonna finally get up the command center and uh, actually at the end of that we do see Marwin getting the head of that so uh, getting the command center finally up and ready um, getting back to you know really not getting out that scouting information I mean, oh, look at that. It did actually get killed off again. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but it appears that has happened. Maybe a stray vulture or something, but that command center is still not building right now, unfortunately. And the SCVs are already transferred over in ready, getting up that second gas right away. And uh, I don't know what Apogis uh, is doing right now, uh, but interestingly enough, uh, checking back at his base, he's getting up in siege mode right now. Um, and he has, he does have two factories right here, and it looks like we're going to have two tank productions right here, which to me is going to say maybe more along the lines of being a bit more defensive from the standpoint, um, just because tanks are really immobile, uh, or eventually go for like a two-base timing push. But with those tank numbers, we'll probably want to sit back for a little while longer. No massive mass vulture kind of thing right, dealio right there. Going to be annoying with that barracks, so we're going to try to stop any kind of mining capabilities right here from these you know four or five patches just make it so they're long distance mining uh just being annoying marwin really kind of i feel like kind of outclassing but we do have a push coming out of podges right now and so far a lot of damage being done right here gonna lose a uh a vulture and a tank from that uh marwin how is he gonna react to this uh this trying to r repair that and he's gonna pull the scvs will he be able to cling on right here this tank back here is not in siege mode oh and look at that Got to be able to cling those on and look at that tank. Getting the two kills on the other tank right there. Desperately clinging on to that. That was amazing play. Coming out of Marwin. Being able to deal with that. I would not have been able to deal with that whatsoever. Oh, but Podges might be able to get that vulture. No, he will not. And this uh, barracks is still just being quite annoying at this time. So well done, well played. And again, just going to have so many tanks coming out over here. Getting up the double uh, factory productions on the machine shops right now. And just more and more tanks. Um, or he could produce more and more tanks. I don't know why he's making a lot of vultures. But um, that looks like he may be pushing to be a little bit aggressive. He wants to get those mines out, of course, as well. Which might be the reason why he's going to stop making tanks just for the time being. So he can get up those mines as they're ever so important. As they provide vision. Back in the bottom right hand corner of the base right here, though. We do have three starports coming up right here. Looks like we're going to have a mass, mass Wraith build coming out of Mr. Podges right here. We'll see if that will be effective or not. In TVT, Goliath are quite good at countering them. And if you can get enough Valkyries as well, you can just absolutely just wreck them. As we've seen, or I've seen in the uh, ICOM Island tour as well. But uh, going up to five factories right here, not opting to take an expansion... Um, which does mean that we are going to be seeing some pressure coming out of, uh, of Marwin quite soon. Um, and we'll see if Podges will be ready for that, of course. Uh, Podges kind of out in the center of the map right here. Not really quite sure what he's trying to accomplish right here as, he, as his forces really aren't that great. He has produced, you know, he's making three starports worth of Wraith right here. No longer even making factory units. And that is risky in it itself. Um, if we were to see a hard, you know, just a, a, I mean, a big push that Marwin is doing, that could just be game over, because I'm not quite sure if the Wraith will actually be able to do enough damage. Now, keep in mind that there could be, if we could see uh, Padges defend off this push, as there are no Goliath in the mix right now, do we have an armory on the way? Uh, yes, we do, in the top left-hand corner. Uh, we could uh, very well see uh, the Wraith being able to do something. Um, as he's going to be start picking off this tank right here. And we'll be finally be able to kill off this pesky <laughs> barracks, of course, flying around over the natural expansion. But uh, two more Wraith are coming over here. Now, this is kind of an... Uh, I mean, this early on, three Wraith does seem a little odd, um, especially if you're in an adept of the TBT, um, which, of course, I'm not saying that you may or may not be. But if you are, then you, you kind of know that four Wraith out by this is kind of ridiculous. So I, something should be going through Marwin's mind right here. We're going to have a lot of... Uh, Vulture's just kind of just trying to come in here, setting up some mines right here. Those tanks are done for sure. And these four Vultures getting in this mineral line right here. These Wraith will eventually clean these up right here, but not before the Vultures are doing some damage onto this. And they are making the SMVs drill, and that Vulture still behind the mineral line still being annoying. Oh, and look at that. I'm sorry. Oh, those, uh, those red tanks were dead, but uh, 
Two more tanks in here. Uh, finally getting cleaned up here. Five kills on that one vulture. And finally getting cleaned up right here. Somehow that barracks is still alive. We have the Goliath out on the field right now. And that's really important right here. Wraith just melts to Goliath. And they really aren't an issue whatsoever. But we have about five vultures coming in here. Definitely trying to get up some turrets right here. But will it be effective or en enough? <laughs> um, will they get up in time? And it looks like Red has stabilized for the time being right here. Picking off that SCV that was producing the turret right here. But Goliath are already in position to deflect those Goliath right now. And these Goliath are going to have a fun time clearing up this barracks from the sky. And again, somehow this barracks is still alive coming out of Marwin. I always tend to lose it within the first five minutes of the game. Uh, especially, even more so, I'm surprised because uh, Padges still has, you know, four Wraith in here right here. And going to start harassing this bottom, the south mineral patch on the natural expansion of Marwin right now. I oh, mean, is he going to be able to keep this barracks alive? Um... Getting a couple good kills right here. Starting to do some really nice harassment right here, but three Goliath are easy. Going to be able to clean those up. Uh, is he continuing to produce them? Doesn't look like it. Uh, and it looks like he's just trying to get up his factory numbers right now. But remember, I mean, we are up to five factories uh, coming out of Marwin right here. The production capabilities of Marwin is going to be the double right now of what uh, Padgett can do out of his factory tech right here. Oh, and he's going to have to pull the SCVs right here. Can he cling on to the tanks just like what Marwin did to defend. It doesn't look like that at all and they are just dying. Not even a scratch onto these tanks right here. One's only in the yellow. The other one is in the green. These Goliaths are just having a frenzy on, pot on top of this natural expansion and even more reinforcements coming in right here. Coming out of Marwin and just wow. And it does appear that G GG coming out of patches right now. GG to Marwin as well. Just interesting game nonetheless. I thought, you know, the interesting text switch into Wraith was just, you know, changing it up a bit. Uh, so we're going to actually go into game number two of this series. Um, again, I thought that one was apparently a good match. I found these replays like two, three days ago. So uh, bear with me. I don't exactly know what happened to them. But uh, yeah, guys, so we'll be back for game number two of this series. Can Marwin just quickly 2-0 or will there be a third ace match going on in this clan league set two of week nine of the iCup clan league season 22 guys between Int <laughs> International Federation of Untouchables versus Salvation Army. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned onto this channel for game number two coming your way shortly. Peace guys.